In this video, we're going to learn how to list in order the transformations required to get from y equals to x squared, so the parent parabola, to y equals to 2x squared minus 12x plus 10. And the method we'll learn here will work every single time we need to list the transformations to get from y equals to x squared to any parabola. So to get us started, let me just move this question to the side a bit, like so. In order to list the transformations, we need to rewrite this parabola's equation in its vertex form. And if you're not sure what the vertex form is, every parabola out there can be rewritten in the form y equals to a times in parentheses x minus h close parentheses squared plus k. And I'll go ahead and box that. That's known as the vertex form of a parabola's equation. With a parabola's equation written in this form, we can quickly list all the transformations. Indeed, just looking at this, we can see that we have a vertical stretch, that's A. We have a horizontal translation, shown by this x minus h in parentheses. And we have a vertical translation at the end here, with this plus k. And so during the first half of this video, I'm going to show you how to write this parabola in this form. If you already know how to do that, you may want to skip ahead in this video. And if not, let's get started. Looking at the vertex form here, it's quite clear that we need to find the values of a, h, and k. And for that, I'm going to be giving you a formula. So let me start by comparing the parabola we have here to the generic parabola written in standard form. So that would be y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. And I do this to be able to state the values of a, b, and c for the parabola we're given. Looking at this, we quickly see that a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 12, and c is equal to 10. And in fact, I'll write those values here. a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 12, and c is equal to 10. Okay, now let's find a, h, and k. First of all, a. Now, luckily for us, a is exactly the same a as the one we have in our equation. In other words, a is the leading coefficient of this parabola, and it's equal to 2 which we listed here. So without even thinking, I can state that a is equal to 2. For h, on the other hand, there's a nice little formula. And here it is. h is equal to the opposite of b, or negative b, over 2a. And in fact, I'll box that formula. Do make a note of it. For the parabola we have here, therefore, since b is negative 12 and a is 2, we'll find that h is equal to the opposite of, or negative, negative 12, over 2 times a, so that's 2 times 2. That's equal to 12 over 4. In other words, h is equal to 3. And we now have h. And I'll add that up here as well. h, h is equal to 3. Next, we need to find the value for k. And to find it, all we have to do is replace every x we have inside our parabola's equation by the value we just found for h. And since we found that h equals to 3, k will be equal to 2 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 10. And I'll go ahead and write that. We'll have k, which will equal to 2 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 10. To be clear, all I've done here is replace every x I have inside my parabola's equation by 3. Now I calculate. So let's see, we'll have 2 times 3 squared, which is 9 minus 12 times 3, which is 36, plus 10. And now 2 times 9 is 18, so we have 18 minus 36 plus 10. And now calculating this from left to right, we have 18 minus 36, which is negative 18, and plus 10 at the end. And finally, since negative 18 plus 10 is equal to negative 8, we can state that k is equal to negative 8. And we're done. We now know the value of k. And I can add that up here we found that k is equal to negative 8. Using these three values of a, h, and k, we can now rewrite our parabola in its vertex form. And so that would be y equals to 2 times, in parentheses, x minus 3 squared plus negative 8, so that's just minus 8. And we've done it. We've written this parabola's equation in its vertex form. Okay, now that we've done this, we're able to list all of the transformations required to get from y equals to x squared to this parabola. And luckily for us, when a parabola is written in its vertex form, the order in which we have to carry out the transformations 
can be listed in the order in which we come across them as we read this equation from left to right. Here's what I mean. Our starting point is y equals to x squared. That's the parent function. And in fact, I could make a sketch of that parent function. It would look something like this. This is our typical parabola, which looks something like this. As we read this parabola's equation in vertex form, the first change or first transformation we come across is the 2 that's multiplying that pair of parentheses. And this 2 corresponds to a vertical stretch with a scale factor of 2. And so I'll just write that. The first transformation, so step 1, is a vertical stretch, vertical stretch, with a scale factor, which I'll write capital S, capital F, equal to 2. And at that stage, the parabola's equation becomes y equals to 2 times x squared. So that's 2x squared. The curve at this stage will look very similar to what we have here, but stretched upwards by a scale factor of 2, which also results in making the curve look more narrow. So I'll sketch something like this. Let's see. I've got my xy grid, and there we go. Slightly more narrow. That's y equals to 2x squared. Okay, that's this 2 taken care of. The next change we see here is that we replace x by x minus 3 inside a pair of parentheses. And this transformation corresponds to a horizontal translation 3 units to the right. And so I'll write that up here. Step 2, horizontal translation or horizontal shift, 3 units to the right. Following this transformation, the new parabola's equation can be obtained by replacing the x we have inside this expression here by x minus 3 inside a pair of parentheses. In other words, at this stage we have y equals to 2 times in parentheses x minus 3 close parentheses squared. And this parabola's curve can be obtained by shifting the one we have here 3 units to the right. And so that would look something like this. There we go. The vertex of this parabola will touch the x-axis at 3, and it will cross the y-axis at 18. Now, if you're wondering how I'm getting 18 here, remember that to find where the curve crosses the y-axis, all you have to do is replace x by 0 inside the equation you have. And so if I replace this x by 0, I end up with 0 minus 3 inside this pair of parentheses, which is negative 3, and when I square that, that turns into 9. Finally, when I multiply that 9 by 2, I get 18. Finally, reading this equation, the last change we see here is this negative 8, or rather this 8 that's being subtracted at the end here. And this transformation corresponds to a vertical translation 8 units downwards. And so I'll write that here. The third and final step is a vertical translation, vertical translation, 8 units downwards. And to get this new parabola's equation, starting from the equation we have at the end of step 2, all I have to do is subtract 8 from the end of it. And so that would be y equals to 2 times, in parentheses, x minus 3 squared minus 8. And I should say, if you were to open up this pair of parentheses, distribute the 2, and simplify the expression you get, you'll fall back on the original equation we started off with, which would confirm that at this stage we're done. These two equations are equal. Now, to obtain this parabola's curve from the parabola we had at the end of step 2, all we have to do is shift this curve 8 units downwards. And in doing so, we'd get something like this. The vertex of this parabola will now have coordinates 3, negative 8. And in fact, I'll write that right here. That's 3, negative 8. And it will cross the y-axis at 10. I'll write that here. That's 10. And I'm finding this value of 10 by shifting this y-intercept at 18, 8 units downwards. Furthermore, this y-intercept of 10 is further confirmed by the 10 that's being added here at the end of the original equation we were given. And there we go. We've just listed the transformations required to get from y equals to x squared to the parabola we have here. Remember, as soon as you have to list the transformations to get from y equals to x squared to any parabola, all you have to do is rewrite the parabola's equation in its vertex form. Once that's done, you can simply list the transformations in the order in which you come across them in the vertex form. And there we go. That's it for this tutorial.